Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad you're here this Friday morning. We're wrapping up the month of June just about it. We're back on the air Monday. It's going to be July. So we're glad you're here. It's been a been an eventful month of June as far as outdoor activities and all. We'll get to that later. But let's go ahead and do our weather for today. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center, the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. High, this is going to be hot. And in the low 90s, and it's going to be uh, just another hot June day. And also, the low is going to only going to get down to like right at 80 degrees. And that, but it's not getting into cool nights much either. And water temperature is still around 88 degrees. Our river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Take it outside with Mountain Dew. We're looking at, I've got a tickle looking at Apalachicola, Blunstown. It's at a 5.5. I was trying to draw an analogy to it. It's at a slow, steady drop. That looks at my checking account at toward the end of the month. It's, it keeps going lower and lower. So that's what the Apalachicola, Blunstown is doing. Just a slow falling out, a little bit of a, it's going to be a good weekend though on the river. Really will be. The uh, Choctatchee Caribou, just real steady, not much of movement at all. Is reading a five, I'm sorry, a 2.3 this morning in Caryville. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Uh, pretty decent tides. We're looking at a high tide of 6.43 this morning and a low tide of 4.53. But if you, I just looked at the first week of July, the tides next week are going to be very, very strong tides all next week. So we got some really uh, exciting things to talk about as far as tidal flow next week. All right, the wind's going to be coming today out of the west at about 10. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's start off with a really good story. I love sharing these good stories. Y'all know my buddy Nat Harris. We've been, we've been friends a long time since we've been doing the show. Uh, Nat's the one that's instrumental in helping us all get out there to Venice, Louisiana on the big trip and all with the, with the Brown family. And we're just, uh, Nat loves to fish and we do some things together. But Nat called me about, if remember two or three weeks ago, called a, called a tag red snapper and wanted to ask me about it because he'd never caught one before. I said, well, call that number on there. And he, so he called it and about uh, five or 10 minutes later, Nat called me right back. I was on the road coming back from Carabelle. He said, Winston, you're not going to believe it. They, they're going to pay me $250 for catching this uh, tag red snapper and reporting it. And I said, that's awesome. Well, he called me yesterday. He said, hey, do you have $2 I can borrow? I said, sure, I got $2 you can borrow. He said, well, I need, I need to buy a, lot of, a lottery ticket. I said, you, I said, you must be feeling lucky. He said, Winston, he said, I caught two more tag red snapper today <laughs> in, the same, in the same area, the same fishing spot. So he's caught three tag red snappers out of that one area at $250 a piece. He's, he's won $250 going fishing and catching tag red snapper. So uh, congratulations, Nat Harris. I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. And I wanna, I'm going to get with you on those lottery tickets because I want you to buy me something this weekend. Uh, that's a lucky man right there. I just thought that was a great story. Uh, I got a couple of pictures. I saw this one. This is, uh, this, this is just funny to me. I had nothing about outdoors. But before Facebook, if you, any, any old family scrapbooks or something, y'all probably seen this. Uh, somebody in the family, they don't like them anymore. And that's a graduation picture. But that's before, before you unfriended people on Facebook. That's how the old timers would do it. I just got a kick out of that. So the older people will enjoy that. Younger people just don't have a clue to that one. The red snapper, listen, this is in Alabama. Uh, they are talking about extending the season, the red snapper season, basically because they're not catching enough of them. What do you think about that? They have a 27-day red snapper season, basically on weekends, and they're not catching enough. Right now, uh, the quota is one million pounds. They, they want the recreational people to catch one million pounds of red snapper, and they're pretty good on keeping records. Right now, they've only caught 300,000 pounds of red snapper. So that is interesting right there. So uh, we'll keep you informed uh, and posted on it. Uh, this was the uh, winner I mentioned about yesterday. The guy that won the for the uh, Chevrolet truck, uh, he was from, he won it down there in Pasco County, kayak fishing. He'd been a member since 2016. He was, he got Father's Day bait money from his daughter. They bought, he caught it on finger mullet. Uh, he showed you two, I hate that. that. I didn't get to win that truck, but I'm glad he won it. 
And uh, anyway, he was on, but it's still, here's what's left at the bottom. A contender 22, a Pathfinder 22, a Hughes Redfisher, a Carolina Skill. That's like flats boats. All. There's still like five, six really good prizes if you catch that tag redfish and they're all registered. I just wanted to, to bring that attention to you. Uh, I got this from my buddy Kurt Davis. This was two days ago. He said, you probably already know, but yesterday there were nine hookups on tarpon, five of which were considered as caught off the county pier. And he saw them with his own eyes and also found one of them was over 100 pounds. Uh, so they were really, they were really catching tarpon all week long. My my uh, reports have been vast. I'm gonna read this later. Uh, here's a good one. Shop local because Amazon won't sponsor your kid's ball team. All right. And here's a good story here uh, from Captain Kim at, at Sea Quarters, right in front of our office. Okay. This is Jordan, the boy that works on the dock down there. Caught that right right in front of the office, out of the river. Big old black drum there. Good job, Jordan, down there in Carabelle at Sea Quarters. And speaking of Sea Quarters, here's their trip they took with Captain Kim. And you can see they had a, this was called the, they called them the Mill Road Gang. But uh, look at that nice catch up out there. And that's a beautiful area down there, one of Florida's last frontiers. Okay, so they want to get those pictures out of the way. Also, keep in mind, I've been by Mexico Beach a lot lately. Uh, and, and all at the Cape and out here to, at the beach and all. The June grass now is, is here, obviously. Got here about two weeks ago. It's just a regular occurring situation. It won't last long, a couple of weeks, but be aware of the June grass. And it doesn't come, it's not solid all up and down the beach. It comes in areas and all. So, uh, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not really bad this year from the, what I've seen. It's not really like huge clumps of it. So be aware the June grass is here. Also, uh, I got some good feedback on the trash uh, segment we did. Several people t touched base with me about how y'all are picking up trash at different areas and outdoors, and we uh, appreciate that very much. And I, well, it's just something we all got to do: just pull together and pick up trash, you know, from these morons out there, and uh, just try to do the best we can, and and try to raise our kids to to love and respect the outdoors. And the other thing I want to do was mention about. I got a call the other, I got, uh, the other day, I didn't get a call, I saw on Facebook, a friend of mine, uh, she just was, had a simple question, does anybody have a window air conditioner we can borrow? And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Folks, there's still people out there, this is a family of four, had a son and daughter, and, and they haven't had any air, you know, since the hurricane. And they were just, it was so hot, you know how hot and miserable it's been at night this last week or two. So. Uh, I did touch base with her. I was going to go buy her one, but they wouldn't let me do it. But they got they got there running. They got window air in the kids' room, but they didn't have one in their, in their room. So uh, they, they do have one now. But keep in mind, if you have an extra window air conditioner, I have one in my utility room. I thought I was going to take it out the next day and bring it to her. But anyway, uh, they're, they're okay now temporarily, but there are a lot of folks that just little simple things like that they just don't have. So if you have a window air or something, touch base with me, and we'll, we'll try to help some people out on that. All right? Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I hope I can get it all in today. We got a, so much to go over. Uh, I, do, I have noticed a lot of rabbits in, in my neighborhood, which is really good. And, and I, I thought to myself, the reason being, I, I think the coyotes, I haven't heard of coyotes in about a year or so. And it's the first time I'm seeing a lot of rabbits. So I think there's a correlation in there somewhere. I need to get with a biologist and all and see that. So if y'all if y'all are doing that in your area, uh, it may be because the coyotes have taken leave. Maybe they left town because of the hurricane and all. Speaking of leaving town, I'm going to tell you it's, it's, it's sort of a heart uh, touching story to me because I know the parties and all. I want to share it with you. I hope I can get over the feelings uh, I had when I when I read it. Uh, this couple, Tony and Teresa Seaborn, I've known them. My first year of teaching at Rutherford, they were. They were seniors at Rutherford, and uh, it was Tony and Teresa, and I remember getting on to them one time for holding hands in the gym. But they were the cutest couple. Well, later on, they, got, they were high school sweethearts, got married, had kids. I taught their son, and I ended up teaching their granddaughter. And just a, it's a, I've known them my whole, life, my whole adult life, and just good quality people. And a hurricane hit them really hard, like it hit so many people. And for you viewers out of town to watch it on YouTube, or maybe this will bring it home to you. They're ending up, they're going to, they've been here their whole life. Tony retired from Bayline and, and uh, they're, going to, they're going to leave town. They're going to move uh, up, at, up to uh, Tennessee, close to their uh, daughter up there. 
and it's just heartbreaking. This is the house they lived in, and the people they sold it to, they left them notes on the wall, some Bible verses, and Tony, I saw where Tony posted it. I'm going to read it to you, and this sort of reflection of here, of, here of how people are, are dealing with things, and, and it's not, it's just, uh, this is heartbreaking to me, but anyway, I'm going to share it with you. 10, 10, 18, okay? My, uh, Tony wrote this on the, on the inside of, she, their, their house is still torn up, and they're putting it back together, the people buying it. Herakim Michael, Category 5, this is Tony, hand print. Category 5 hit Bay County, destruction everywhere. We lost our home here that it took a lifetime to build. With my love, Teresa Dudley, Seaborn, and two kids, Kim and Ryan. We were here over 40 years, and it took about one hour to lose. Appreciate what you have, Tony Seaborn. And they were in the house 40 years, and, uh, and like I say, so many people lost their homes, and that sort of uh, the heartbreaking thing about it. So I want to try to relay that feeling, and, and I'm going to keep talking about it because it's still like the air conditioner last night. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's just something we need to be aware of and help our fellow man out, and we're going to meet, miss Tony and Teresa. We sure are. In our community, we've lost some quality people like that from the, uh, from the Florida panhandle that decided to move on to other places. So Tony and Teresa, best of luck to you. They're going to live up in the mountains and close to their daughter. So anyway, let's go on to something now. We want to go to... Uh, the other day, it was Gail's birthday, and we were going to, I wanted to do something special for her. I said, well, I said, what do you want to do? I gave her all kinds of chores. So we ended up going uh, over towards Sandestone and swung back by because she wanted to have lunch at, at Trey Nick's place, Nick's, Nick's restaurant right there at Basin Bayou, the other side of Freeport. Now, Basin Bayou and Freeport, that's two different places. Basin Bayou is several miles past Freeport. But it's been on the water there a long time. It was one of our favorite. It is, it is our favorite place to go uh, at, when we go out of town somewhere. We like to go to, to uh, Nick's restaurant. It's special. The, the fish and the crabs and oysters come off the boat into the kitchen right there. So uh, it's a special place. So Trey, Nick was, Trey was there. And uh, he's just uh, he's got all kinds of things uh, going on. He's now a county commissioner, which I'm so proud to have outdoorsmen like him. And, uh, his third generation with a restaurant. and uh, So anyway, I said, I got the camera in the car. Let's do a quick interview. So we had a little, a little boy growing up and all. So what we have now, we have this little interview with, uh, with Trey Nick. So Jeff, let's roll this interview. All right, so we just rolled it in the Freeport. Actually, Gail wanted somewhere special to eat. And I said, where do you want to go, honey? She want to go out of town. And she said, I want to go to Trey Nick's place. So we're in Freeport. And she want to come over and eat. And I think it's her birthday. Is that right? Uh, that's right. Well, I'm glad you're here. Well, I'm glad you're here. First of all, you're the county commissioner now. Yeah, I'm the Walton County Commissioner here in, uh, here in Walton County for District 4, which, which lies just west of the restaurant here, all the way to Sandestin Marina and north of the Phoenix Springs. That is awesome. That is awesome. Outdoors, when someone like you in this position in the government, we're proud of that. Well, thank you. I appreciate now, that. Last time we saw Little Man, it was a, a tournament up the road here. He was a little bit smaller. He, he's growing. Yeah, he has. He, been, he was brim fishing that day when we were at a brim turn we had up in Red Bay. That's right. And, uh, and that's been good. And now I dropped him off here at the restaurant this morning at 6 o'clock to get on the crab boat to go crabbing. And I, I went to the commission meeting. So I would, I'd have been there with him, but I had to go, I had to go serve the county today. So. Well, you did good today. Tell us what happened. Well, we went out there and just uh, checked our traps. How many, by how many traps did you check this morning? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. through Tartacha Bay? And yeah. All? Yeah, our, tra our trap set mostly on the west side of Highway of, of 393. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, the west side of the, of the Mid Bay Bridge Road. Let's right. correct that. West side of the Mid Bay Bridge Road and, and run run to the, I'm sorry, the east side. Let's yeah. just do that. East side of the Mid Bay Bridge all the way to the mouth of the river. All the way to the mouth of the Chattanooga River. They were, so, they were healthy. That's a good, that's a healthy male right there. That crab, he's full of meat, he's brown. Turn him over, turn him upside down, and I'll show you. He's rusty brown, let's just do that again right there. Now see that, see how dark he is? Yes. Now that, that crab is full of meat. His next phase in life is death. So he's not gonna molt anymore. He's not gonna grow any more than that size right there. So what you're seeing is his last molt stage, and he's actually full of meat. So when you, in the market, when, you, when you're picking through a box of crabs, yeah. the, the dark ones, the ones with the dirty bellies, are always the, the ones with fullest meat. So. What a great tip on buying yeah. crabs. Yeah. That is so 
out there. So you got it fresh right here at the restaurant. Yes, sir. And we catch them locally here for the, out of the Chattahoochee Bay. We put those crabs in our restaurants. So what you what you're eating on, in the, on, on the table, come right here locally. Uh, so you can't beat that. You can't get better than that. That's right. That's awesome. You've been working hard. How do you like this seafood business? <laughs> we gotta keep that family tradition going. That's right. Yeah, we gotta cut some mullet today. We get ready. I got this mullet in the box. Oh man! Watch that stuff. I almost ordered mullet. I'm getting ready to order one. Yeah. 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 All this one's going for. Yeah. Yeah. So that right there, that come out of this chopped hatchy bay. Now that's what we like to eat right there. Look at that. And I tell you, mullet is the freshest fish. You, and when you get it in a restaurant, it's going to be the freshest fish available. Because you've got to eat mullet the day you catch it. That's right. And if you don't do that, you know, I mean, you're, he's, you might as well throw him away. You know, you're going to put him in the crab trap. So. That's right, man. And that's, and that's, what, we, that's what we do right here. Right here locally. That fish comes right out of that chocolate hatchet bay, and we put it on our plate. All right. Y'all come up here to Nick Seafood. All right. Well, the business has been here since 1956. Uh, we started, my granddaddy built the new place in 1963, and it's been here ever since. So. We love coming over here. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I got fish lime on my hands, but he's used to that, right? I'm used to that. We say I'm watching the show, it's us over there. Thank you, thank you. We support you 100%. Thank you. All right, man, we'll see you next time. All right, we'll see y'all. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. You want some really good fresh food? Go over there. That's the freshest seafood right from the boat to to uh, Nick's. Okay, and it's right at Basin Bayou. Now let's uh, draw for speaking of good fresh seafood. How about Tarpon Dock on this side of town? All right, twenty dollar gift certificate, and the winner is going to be. I'm gonna serve them up really good, and the winner is going to be for the twenty dollar one is going to be from Sneeds, Martha Jones from Sneeds, $20 there, and then also for the big red snapper, it may not be quite this big, but it's gonna be a big red snapper from Southport, Ernie Rogadio, my neighbor down the road there, Ernie, okay, that's, all right, you won a lot last year. Now let's get, let's take a look at our fishing forecast. We've got some really good information, and I hope, I'm just gonna, let's start down here in, in Carabelle, this is fascinating, but, uh, their world's just been upside down over there. Captain Kim, see, this is a real long report she sent. I'm gonna hit the highlights of it. Uh, Hubby went uh, long, they caught, they're catching a lot, of, a lot of fish down there, okay? They limited out, they limited out early on red snapper and grouper. By eight or 8.30, they got the limits. Uh, the kings are biting. Down in Carabelle, the kings are really strong. So we're getting ready for that big tournament of uh, one month from now. It'll be the big sea quarter tournament. Tarpon are rolling all over the place, okay? Uh, tarpon down there, tarpon here, June is late June, early July, tarpon uh, territory. Also, the, uh, the dock hand, he's been catching a lot of sharks. Uh, a lot of sharks in the area this time of year, they're catching a bunch of them. Uh, Captain Tim uh, limiting out. Uh, also, plenty, they got plenty of bait. Now, if you want somewhere to get bait, right there, Sea Quarter Marina, they got plenty of bait. They got, uh, they got high octane gas. And here's the kicker now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this with you really quick. She wrote, and this has been sort of been a secret and we're gonna go ahead and let it out. So I knew it was only gonna be a matter of time before this is gonna start happening. And it started happening down there. It hasn't happened here, but you're gonna see it's gonna sweep the area. And you're gonna hear it first here on Panhandle Outdoors. All right, here we go. Fish bites are the ticket in the river and just off the grass for Lunker Redfish. I'm gonna read that again. Fish bites are the ticket here in the river and just off the grass for the lunk of redfish. Folks are starting to fish with fish bites for redfish and, uh, and uh, it's just a coming thing. So be uh, something you just learned on Panhandle Outdoors. Really good report from, uh, from Carabelle. Okay, let's go over the other end. Uh, this is from the Choctahatchee River. Our buddy Larry Brown. Here, here's the thing about these reports. They're coming from people right there. Larry fishes three or four times the river, for, for three or four times on the river and he's just so good about sending reports. So. Uh, I'm just going to read what he says, okay? The river has been, this is Choctatch River. The river has been falling and the color is perfect. Water temperature is 83 degrees on the river. Freshwater fishing has been good early mornings and it seems to be turning off in mid-morning. That's about a good pattern in the summertime. Fish early, okay? 
the uh, bay the bay report is unchanged. The redfish are there, but trout trout are really slow in Choctahatchee Bay. The uh, the heat is putting uh, more pressure on the trout. Really, it's sort of bothering them, and they're not mullet mullet all over the river. We're catching redfish up in the river. Uh, we've been seeing lots of sturgeon, and uh, now we're seeing. Listen to this. Now we're seeing manatees in the river. So on the Choctahatchee River, you're seeing sturgeon and manatees. That's that's fascinating to me. Uh, you see uh, two prehistoric creatures coming up in that area, the sturgeon and manatees. Here locally, the pier, uh, they're catching tarpon. It, that's the talk of the town right now, of the fishing community. The amount of tarpon being caught off the county pier and the city pier. It first started with nine that day, then it was up to 50. Now it's been documented, there's been over 100 tarpon that's been hooked this week at the piers here in Panama City. That is fascinating that that's that usually don't get that many but it's been a great week on on the on the tarpon and if they're catching them on the pier i guarantee you they're going to be catching them uh, at crooked island sound at tip of the cape so if you have a boat you really want to get hooked into a really big tarpon now's the weekend to do it so really concentrate on catching tarpon it's going to be excellent also the redfish that like i can say has been steady here in, in the st andrew bay system have been real steady the trout bite's been a little bit off. With everyone I've talked to, the trout bite's been a little bit off. The heat has just been oppressive. Our fishing guides, we've talked about it, the fishing guides have had a tough time getting their customers out. With June has been windier than March this year, and I don't know the reason, but it's just been a very windy June, and people have had to be selective in their fishing. The river fishing has been really good. Brim fishing been good early. Calf fishing has been good. Uh, Lake Seminole has been a good report from there. And it's just been a, a good situation as far as the fishing community. Uh, it's just been a good week. Basically, uh, surf fishing has been slow because of the June grass, okay? And uh, that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, you can go online and, uh, and uh, check us out. Uh, our, our shows are on, on, the, on uh, YouTube. Tell your friends to watch them on YouTube anywhere across the country. I'm getting some good feedback from people all over the place, including Indiana, and I'll talk about that next week. Thank you all for watching Pan Am Outdoors. We've had a great week, and do like Dr. Sunsera said, cover yourself up, okay, and be protective. Do something good today for your fellow man. Enjoy the great outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.